also raised this issue with Donald Trump. I uh, have the same opportunity to speak to the Democratic Convention as we did gather in August. Um, but what has Joe Biden told you about that? Since it loads up here, hey guys, welcome to Pillars of Eternity to Dead Fire. We're doing a 2024 run. I got some mods downloaded for this too. We'll go through them in a minute. Here we go. I got a mod uh, here from Steam Workshop. Uh, it's a Steam account. So, companion armor, unique companion armors. Items rebounds, improve some unique items, armors and shields. New ranger tweaks. It's so normally I play ranger or druid. So new abilities, talents, and existing changing subclasses. Trinkets, change some items to be trinkets. Vanilla weapon rebounds, improve spears, two handed weapons, damage, etc. Vanilla Druid rebounds, improves Druid casting and recovery speech. See, Vanilla Ranger rebounds, major changes to the Ranger and Animal Companion. Subclasses unlocked. Unlock most of the hidden subclasses. Heroic Origins just gives you more points at character creation. And enhanced user face. Uh, this is just for mod makes game mechanics easy to understand by adding in a bunch of stuff to the UI. So, so that's good. Playing turn based. I got eight brass blessings, so I used to go with five grand and the special item vendor at the beginning. Start game. Uh, 
the support and co-sponsor of AI Manufacturer Builder uh, addresses on sourcing critical uh, AI maintenance in China. He's also supported paid sick leave for railroad workers and remember that situation a couple of years ago. Uh, he's, a time, he was, he's, he's also been uh, very vocal and supportive employees accountable to try and skirt their obligation uh, under an uh, independent contract the model known as DSP. So he's been right there on all our issues. Uh, we publicly uh, stated it. And look, I, at this day and age, it's not that better than having a U.S. parade uh, represented uh, uh, as a vice president candidate. Uh, you know, youth is great. Uh, oftentimes, you know, uh, because of the rush, but it should be uh, looked at because of their ability. I get that all, all the time. So anyway, um, what is your goal tonight? Maybe the gods. But my goal tonight is to uh, let everybody know how important the working class in our world is, how important uh, we have been. Uh, and I want to encourage people to have an open mind to work together. You know, it's unfortunate this country is divided right now. And, you know, we've got other, other uh, world leaders looking at us, laughing at us because they don't want to fracture the infrastructure of the United States. And look, we're not always going to agree on the But at the end of the day, when this situation is where we can come together, work together, and support working class Americans, but more importantly, uh, support the greatest uh, nation in the world, that's my goal tonight. All right, so when you look at the middle of the Democrats here, you know, I was making the assumption that, you know, obviously Joe Biden will be the Democratic nominee. There's still people who doubt that that's going to be the case. Many of your colleagues in the union movement have been quietly looking for alternatives convinced that Joe Biden is, is, is a losing candidate. They're looking at other, other names even now, even after this weekend. Uh, look at developments for Donald Trump uh, and, and the near assassination. Uh, what are your thoughts on that? Would you be more suited to talk at the Democratic convention if they let you if the word different nominee? No, I'm ready to speak whoever the nominee is, whether it's uh, President Biden or whoever that may be for the fall. You are correct. You know, there's been a lot of talk about uh, other unions looking uh, for, for alternative candidates. But a lot of legislatures that have uh, been looking for an alternative candidate. You know, the reality of it is whoever is a nominee, whether it's President Biden or anybody else, uh, we're all believing in what I'm going to explain. You know, what I'm going to explain. What I'm going to explain. Just like we're doing here this week. So, when you, you know, look at the economy right now, but the White House likes to say it's improving, inflation is off its worst levels, that's all us doing that, all the job creation from us doing that. And some of them might look at you right now on the floor of the Republican Convention and say, Sean, what is the gods aren't real. Else well, look, I, I can only speak for my membership. I mean, look, there's no, there's no dispute in the facts. Inflation's high. Uh, we've got to curb that. You know, uh, there is layoffs uh, throughout our system in different industries. Uh, so, you know, sometimes, you know, the picture that's painted isn't always accurate. Uh, but the fact of the matter is, you know, I think we're all caught up in this political uh, political fight right now, which is not helping the economy. It's not helping inflation. And again, this goes to my point that, you know, we've got to find solutions to these problems. It can't be, um, we, we've got to remember who we actually work for. You know, the politicians work for their constituents who live in their communities. You know, our members uh, are a part of those uh, communities where they live. So these solutions need to be found. Do I believe, uh, you know, we're in the greatest economy we're in right now? I don't believe we are. I think we could be. Um, you know, there's still a lot of people that uh, aren't working. What um, industries that are suffering, but you know, the reality is we, we, we are doing pretty good, uh, but we always can do better. I guess America just wants to know this as a final question. Um, are you going to wear a tie tonight when you address the I am definitely going to wear a tie tonight. So I wear a tie most of the time, but you know, I'll be honest with you, I didn't want to look like I didn't want to look like I was wearing the same thing twice. So, I don't know. Plus, you know, the work of guys, we don't always wear ties. No, no shirts. Um, Chuck, thank you for, for joining us today. We're looking forward to your remarks tonight. Uh, it's sort of an unprecedented. I don't believe we have seen this, at least in the last century or so. And you want to cheat to address it. Republican convention. So all eyes on Sean O'Brien, the Hampshire General President, tonight. All right, in the meantime, I want to go uh, back to Aisha Hostel. Who were there if they wait to see, I guess, the, the, the presidential ticket, which you lose out in the Yes. Yeah.
Let's go with Fury. Well, uh, people are worried 
but it'll be the first time, perhaps, that the former president has seen since the assassination and expect this place uh, to go first. I would imagine, and you mentioned the apprentice analogy, I thought the same, but it was early on we found Marco, Marco Rubio was not uh, the finalist, and then Doug Bergen, I, don't, I think it was that one. Um, so he did have an apprentice field, though, and that does seem to be orchestrated by Donald Trump. Uh, so he's very clear and resolute on his message. Uh, but he's been through a lot, an enormous amount, and I'm just wondering how he's taking all this in. You had a chance to talk to him. How does he deal with it? It's fascinating. Since that assassination, I think he has had a whole process about how blessed he is uh, to be alive. Uh, he talked to the doctor, and he said, the doctor said, you know, if his motive was literally just seven years, I said, if your head was not turned, looking at that graphic of the border security on the side, uh, then he would have he would have been dead with the temple. And uh, he acknowledges that. And he looked at it and said, you know, that moment he wanted to put his hand up uh, for the crowd to tell them he was okay. But also, it's inherent in who former President Trump is, uh, that he took that moment and that indelible image, Neil, I don't think we will ever uh, not see that in any history book or any talk about politics in the 2024. You know, I've got, I've, you know, I like to talk about the markets, because just to ensure that I can keep the dull thing going. Well, that things I found interesting today, and I don't think it's unique to today, but there are a lot of Trump related industry stocks and sectors that were advancing today on the notion that I just don't win. Now sometimes Wall Street is wrong and normally it doesn't start seriously paying attention. This is even to late summer, early fall. But because of the assassination attempt, because of all this other news, it's moving earlier than normal. Um, what do people need to talk to say about that and whether the markets could be telegraphing something? Yeah, I mean though this is the betting markets uh, about elections. Uh, turn, started turning towards the former president in that debate. Right. And uh, when, when the debate happened, but then the follow up to the debate, since the assassination attempt, it has gone through the roof. I mean, the, the disparity between the two is very big. So, watching those markets is interesting, but it is, to your point, July. We have a long way to go. Uh, the Democrats are going to have their pitch in their convention in Chicago. And the real question, is whether they get their act together, whether they circle around President Biden, whether he is still the nominee by the time they get to Chicago. And then that party is, is going through a lot of turmoil. This party, it seems, is galvanized and united. And uh, and a lot of it comes down to Saturday. Right, you're right about that. Let me get your take, Chris, but I, I wish I could put, extend this into the municipal bond market, but it's probably less quick. I'll skip that one and go right to how they're going to announce it. Explain the process. How are you going to do that? Well, I think we don't know exactly. I think that we've seen uh, that they may have the ticket together to walk out on the stage. It's a possibility. But we may see this behind us uh, as the band stops. And uh, whether they want to say something, we don't know. This is part of the surprise of this convention. I, I'm wondering, too, we've seen this in the past. Let's just see what the speaker has to say. It is now my honor to introduce the Attorney General of Iowa, Brenna Byrd. Please join me in giving her a warm welcome. Oh, <laughs> 
Tutti da sai se c'è. Delegates and alternates, pursuant to Rule 48, a motion denied by 
making a motion. Thank you, Madam Chair. My name is Bernie Marino. I'm honored to be the Republican nominee for the U.S. Senate from that great state of Ohio. I know firsthand that my dear friend J.D. is a selfless and brilliant fighter. He is a patriot who loves America. He loves Ohio. He loves his family. He's a great father. He's a great man. And that's what we need in this nation today. The J.D. Vance, America First is not just a slogan. It's his North Star. He has followed in every moment of his life and career. He knows what it's like to live in poverty, forgotten by Washington politicians. He is dedicated to ensure that no American has ever forgotten again. It is a great honor to move that J.D. Vance be nominated by acclamation by this Republican National Convention as its candidate for the office of Vice President of the United States of America.
surreal moment in political history. I don't think there's any way to oversell it. I do find it funny watching people who call Trump a threat to democracy now wishing for his speedy recovery. I mean, do people who fought Hitler wish in a speedy recovery after they attempted to kill him? No. Or could it be that they never really meant it to begin with and it was just words, stuff you say to win? I almost respect the dogs not barking, the Joy Reeds, Madonna, Cher. Hollywood for once is biting its collective lip. Uh, maybe they realize they went too far to walk it back with a Hallmark greeting card. But I think the Dems never understood the statistical possibility of demonic messaging, right? Say this stuff repetitively to 300 million people. The there's going to be a few nutcases that act on it. My feeling is the left doesn't know it goes too far until they go too far. It's always been about abolishing boundaries from borders to gender to the nature of crime to rhetoric. Without any normal stopgap of moderate Democrats, they just keep going and keep going until you see what happens on Saturday. The fact that Joy Reid protected her tweets going underground, morning, morning breath taken off the air to the mission that the boundaries were crossed. And even they realize that they themselves cannot be trusted. This is the drunk who actually hands over their own car keys. And I think what we're seeing is what happens when you conflate boundaries with losing. It's not losing to surrender to limits. It's being a conscious human saying, you know, maybe we went too far. I'm looking for something that, that, uh, that uh, I'm just going to say, there was something you said, I don't know when it was, a couple of days ago, Jesse said, like, why can't you just not win this one? Yeah. Why, do, why do you have to win everything? And I go back to that thought because it's like, for Republicans, politics on the list of things that matter are below family, the work, religion, NASCAR, hunting, fishing, but for a lot of Democrats, it's, it's personal, it's their life. And so they don't have any boundaries when it comes to the things that they say. You know, I'm not saying that they caused this thing. What I'm saying is that it's assassination by amplification. You can't, you don't call somebody Hitler in the hopes that they don't get killed. Right? You don't demonize somebody hoping that they get flowers sent to them. You do this because you have a desire to win it at all costs. And now you see what happens. And now you have people say, you know what, maybe, maybe we should dial it back a bit, dial it back a bit. I think it was on the view. They said, we need to lower the temperature. And they are nothing more than arsonists who aren't aware of the actual work they've done. They raise the temperature every day. They said, threat to democracy, a threat to democracy. I know what's worse, believing that Trump was a threat to democracy, or saying he was, and knowing you were lying, and not understanding what you did. So, that's my thing. Oh, one thing. We're going to get everybody at the table uh, and in on here. I just I was wanting to ask you about MSNBC's decision to pull more go. I mean, this is the president's show that he watches every morning, so he has a big prime time address. And then the next morning, his big show isn't on because it's presumably because somebody told CNN that you felt like that you know, the panel couldn't be trusted. It's an admission of guilt. That's what it is. If they take, like, let's say something, take anything like January 6th, for example, nobody was taken off a of box because we are guilty. We are here to talk about what happened. They uh, they understood that they have people like Joy Reid. Why did she want her tweets down? Is she cleaning up her, her, all of her media footprint? The MSNBC must understand that where they are in this game, that they let it here. And I mean, it, to me, it's like, Either you double down on Trump as Hitler or you go quiet. Either way, Jesse, it is the senator from Ohio, the junior senator, oh, uh, J.D. Vance, he won in uh, 2022. So he's been a senator just for a couple of years. Kind of reminds me of a lot of Well, first of all, Jessica, it's good to have you back. Yeah, 
or so missed, and you just happened to be present at the perfect time and delivered a speech when you missed the Trump trial and Biden's meltdown, the debate, and the attempted assassination. Thank you, Jessica. All right, so Vance is good. I like him. They like him because he's great on television. He is composed and will be calm when he prosecutes Kamala. We call her Lappin, L-A-F-F-I-N, apostrophe. And he's great on these mainstream media shows. He's just very moderate and then hits you in the face eloquently. But his biography is stunning. His biography, he's a poor kid from a steel town in Ohio. His dad wasn't there. His mom was an addict, raised by his grandmother. In one of these towns that was hollowed out by these double trade deals, he's kind of has the biography of populism. And he goes and joins the Marines, and he comes back to the Ohio State. And then Yale, which was my safety school. And then becomes this brilliant author and also a venture capitalist, but he's not a corporate Republican. He's for the American worker, and that really distinguishes him from a lot of, of the older Republicans. And then his age obviously distinguishes him. I think he's younger than Jessica. She pointed out in the dream room. Uh, she's not upset about it, but ideologically, he's America first. She touched on it last week. He doesn't want to get entangled with these alliances. He's for strong borders, strong tariffs, and just has a very nice family structure. And he'll be a great future leader in the party, but he's not being anointed. He's not going to be, you know, Trump's not saying you're going to take the maggot torch and run with it. He's going to have to work for the nomination in 28, and he probably will do a good job. Judge, can you give us a sense of uh, President Trump's frame of mind for 48 hours since the assassination attempt he is here in Milwaukee? I don't know exactly what I'm going to hear from him, but we do know that he gave a pretty remarkable interview, and it was banned in the New York Post, in which he said, I have been given a chance yeah. to unite. What do you think? Well, I've spoken to him a couple of times in those 48 hours, and you know, it's amazing. It's just been 48 hours since he was knocked down by a shot in that iconic moment where his fist is up, he's down with the American flag in the background, and it shows that, um, and I believe that would be a statue one day. I mean, I think there's, it's so iconic. It's just tell, so telling of the moment. But the fact that he made a decision to get up, he even said he wanted to continue the speech. Um, and he talked about being defiant in the face of wickedness. And then he would continue to go forward, continue with the Republican National Convention, announce the vice presidential candidate. You know, he feels, he feels that there was a hand of God involved. He does believe that there was divine intervention here. And I think that in picking J.D. Vance, Donald Trump is feeling bullish. I think that, you know, there was those who said, you know, you have to pick a woman, you have to pick a minority, you have to pick someone from a swing state. Well, you know, J.D. Vance is from Ohio. I think Trump is 10 points up in Ohio. But J.D. Vance's story is a story of America. I mean, Jesse made it clear. I mean, he came from next to nothing. You know, a mother who had a lot of problems. And he went to Yale and he, he went into the Marines after 9-11. He's got three young kids. He's married to a woman who's an attorney. And he tells me that it's MAGA now and MAGA in the future. And that's what Donald Trump is interested in. He loves this country. He believes that J.D. Vance's policies are now aligned with his. And so he's comfortable with it. He's comfortable with a former Iraq veteran. And I think that this is a great fit for him. And I can't wait to see the Vance.
really got to back and forth on all this, but that doesn't ring true to me. I'm going to let Democrats doesn't think that we've got to do everything we possibly can to save the top of the ticket and all the way down. In terms of the J.D. Vance pick, this is what Democrats wanted for him to pick J.D. Vance. J.D. Vance is, uh, you know, a, a security blanket with a beard for Donald Trump. And I know the beard was a, a big point of contention, and I'm glad that he's uh, willing to give the, the facial hair a chance there. Uh, he has exactly the same face as Donald Trump. He doesn't expand the back. He's going to let Ohio anyway. Uh, his policies are the same, protectionist, America first, anti-NATO, throw the Ukraine to the wolves. Um, he's got a great backstory for sure. Uh, I read all the like every good liberal in the country. He was not as the book. What the election was going to be about is still about. And when I saw Glenn Young come out today, and the reception was so gloomy to him, I thought, oh, is this happening? Like, that would be really bad. Not necessarily just about putting Virginia in play, and I know it's close there. But just looking forward, you know, Nikki Haley's going to be here. I said, did Trump really have a moment with God or come to Jesus every week? And he said, It'll be, it should be Nikki Haley or Glenn Young, and there's some guests he goes that are truckers. But he didn't do that. He called an instinct. And he didn't get all. And I said this earlier, I was talking to Martha about it. Donald Trump wants to strike this uniting tone. He talked about that in his interview. J.D. Vance was the first person to blame Joe Biden and the Democrats for what happened to him. So maybe they'll just do this as a, you know, a, 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 a twofer, right? Donald Trump goes this way, and then J.D. Vance stabs that way and says the thing that Donald Trump is really thinking. But he thinks this isn't presidential enough. But I would just add one point here is that I don't think President Trump needed a vice presidential pick that would help expand the map because Trump himself is expanding the map. Because now we're looking at New Hampshire, Minnesota, Virginia, states that the Democrats had run before. I forgot to add, and it's my favorite topic, right? Abortion. So I just, you know, I'm a new mom, so I'm firing out right away. But I really bad for JD Vance. Okay, let's save it here. It's a good time to save. Excellent. We'll catch you guys on the next one. All right. Peace out. When the sawdust settles and the engine roars, the thing you care about is a job well done. But when you get your tools from Arbor Freight, something about the job feels different. You're walled.